Education has become one of the most fiercely debated political battlegrounds. Billions of pounds of our money are poured into schools every year. But there's an aspect of education that is rarely questioned, a slow, creeping change in the makeup of our schools. One third are now faith schools. I did. I converted to Catholicism. For the sake of your child? For the sake of my child. If you come to our school, they're very much open minds. What we are trying to indoctrinate is a view that faith matters. Some say parents must be able to educate their child in their faith. Do you believe that parents have the human right to choose the education for their children or not? Others fear this is limiting and divisive. To separate yourself off from the rest of humanity is deeply, deeply tragic. Isn't it time for our society to rethink what is best for children? I want to explore the balance of rights between a parent's right to educate a child in their own faith and the children's rights to determine their own beliefs and approach the world with a genuinely open mind. One in three state schools in our country is now a faith school, a school with formal links to a religion. These schools have extraordinary privileges. Because 60 years ago, churches provided half the money for their schools, many were allowed to discriminate on religious grounds in selecting pupils based on parents' faith and in recruiting staff. They could also have the freedom to teach their own syllabus of religious education, RE. Today, we taxpayers fund the running of these schools and also pay up to 90% of the cost of building them. But the problem is, the churches held on to their special powers in their schools. And then the government under Tony Blair made a decision that changed Britain forever. It oversaw the foundation of over a hundred new faith schools, including Muslim, Hindu and Sikh schools, along with 42 academies sponsored by Christian organisations. A big man for a big job. Charles Clark's waited a long time for this. This man was Education Secretary under Blair. Why did he open the floodgates? You say, well, we're only going to keep it that you have Christian and a tiny proportion of other faith schools. I think that leads you into serious risk of discrimination in relation to saying it's okay to have a Christian faith school, but for the sake of argument, not a, Mus not a Muslim faith school, which I think is not acceptable, and therefore you've got to have the same rule for all. I understand Charles Clark's desire not to discriminate against minority religions. I agree we need one rule for all, but I think the government turned the wrong way. It should have abolished the faith component altogether, not rolled out more faith schools. Now, you can make a logical argument. I completely uh, understand it. Uh, in fact, I first was a co-author of a pamphlet about this in 1978, which says, abolish all faith schools. But I think you've then got to look at how that relates to what the population as a whole feel about faith schools themselves. Well, you wouldn't have to abolish them. You would just stop supporting them on, with government money. Or, so well, that's the same as abolishing them. I mean, Any, anybody, you, yes. You can go... I mean, the net effect of this would be to close thousands of schools no, in... Let the in schools England. remain, but... Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but Abolish the separation between Catholic, Protestant, etc. No, but you're saying, you're saying take the money away from a school which has that, has that uh, character. Yes, and but, that means, but the, but the, the school could stay, school. it's got the same building, same teachers, No, I understand, else. but you're yeah. taking away 90% of their revenue funding. Closing these schools, which I think is the effect of what you say, is something that wouldn't be accepted. But it's the their country. decision to close it. I mean, they, they, they have the option. Okay, so I'm Secretary of State for Education, and 4,000 schools are closed by, OK, their decision, not my decision. But as a result of what I have said, hypothetically, uh, waving your big stick, which you've offered me, uh, I don't think that the society would accept that. Having been a key player in this huge gamble with our country's education system, you'd hope there'd be more enthusiasm and conviction in Charles Clark's backing for faith schools. In fact, we find he used to be against faith schools, and his main defence of them now seems to be that voters wouldn't agree to abolishing them. And I'm not at all convinced Charles Clark is right about public feeling. In fact, we commissioned an ICM opinion poll that showed a clear majority, 59%, still believed that schools should be for everyone, regardless of religion, and the government should not be funding faith schools of any kind. 
I believe the government must act and take the faith out of faith schools. The first and most outwardly dramatic change being brought about by these schools has been a bizarre distortion of parents' behaviour, particularly in the push for primary school places. About 7% of the British population worship in church, but around 36% of primary schools are run by the churches, and they can select pupils on the basis of parents' faith. Parental choice? OK, let's talk about parental choice. Suppose I'm a parent living with my children exactly here in Oxford, where we are standing now. If we want a faith-based primary school, we've got all these red dots to choose from within easy walking distance. There's St. Philip and St. James, there's St. Aloysius at Catholic school, and there's St. Barnabas, another Anglican school. But if we want a non-faith-based school, we've got to go miles here, here, or here, or here. Parents who wish to exercise their choice of a non-faith-based education for their children are effectively discriminated against. They're excluded from one-third of British state-funded primary schools. How do parents feel about this? I've come to Mum's Net. Justine? Richard. Hello. How nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you very for coming. Much for having me. Welcome to Mum's Net well, Towers. Really Mum's Net is a web forum where parents get together online using pseudonyms to chat freely about issues involving their children. I'm here to ask about their experience of faith schools. Slug is saying it's not that we're forced into a choice, it's that we were excluded from state-funded schools because of our lack of faith. It would be unacceptable, of course, to exclude people on the basis of their race but somehow it's okay if it's their parents' religion. Joe Bounds' son is excluded from all three of the local primary schools, two Anglican and one Catholic, on the grounds that his parents are not churchgoers. Oh, God, there's so much going on, I can't keep up. Hang on. Hmm. If parents don't want their children to be excluded, the other option, of course, is to fake a faith. Our neighbours trot along to church every Sunday, rolling their eyes as they go, all so that their children can go to the local school. Well, we seem to be hearing that again and again. <sighs> I went to meet one couple who wanted to send their daughter to what they thought was the best school in their area, a Catholic primary. But the problem was they weren't practicing Catholics. The SATS was 100%. So, you know, first child, you just want to, you want the best of the best for your child. Yeah, we spent four years going to church, doing, you know, doing and the right thing. you went to church yeah. in order to get the child into the yeah. school? Yeah. Church yeah. every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the criteria. Attendance, parish priest has to sort of sign you off. You, you, you mean he stood at the door and ticked your name off not, as you walked not, in? Not, yeah, not quite, but yeah. almost. After church, everyone was crowding the priest to say, hi, look, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Helen converted to Catholicism. Converted didn't to Catholicism. Yeah. I did. From what? Um, from Protestants. You were brought um, up? Plymouth. Plymouth Brethren. Plymouth Brethren in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. So that was my um, commitment to so you, my daughter. Did you have to do anything else? Any other hoops you had to jump through? Be nice to the priest. <laughs> Be nice to the priest in what sort of way? Well, if you had a cough, you'd get him some cough mixture or, you know, just generally feed his ego. That's not too serious bribery, I suppose. Was there anything more serious than that? Well, I, it, got to, it, it got to the stage where, you know, it was, it was sort of hinted at that, um, you know, things like, you know, the, the church roof needed fixing and, you know, the, 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 the fee of £5,000 was sort of bandied about that, that, that if you sort of, you know, contributed that amount, your child was guaranteed a, a, a place in school. But if you gave £5,000 to the church... You guaranteed a spot. You would get your child in yeah, school yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because it's not money to him, but if his church looks like it's getting bumped on seats on Sunday, um, you know, if the coffers are full, he's doing a good job, isn't he? Because he, he actually said that to me, it's about bums on seats. We contacted the priest in question. He denied these claims and stated he had nothing to do with admissions which were dealt with by an independent body. Of other faiths, the Church of England told us that not every admission to their schools is based on parents' religion, 